You think this is something that's too hard? Something that's left to the pros? Shit on that. If you got a couple hours on a weekend and the drive, you can achieve these same results. Mark here with R&D. Anytime you're restoring a car, you're gonna run into sheet metal holes, rot, rust, or damage. So the repair we're doing is on a Corvair door. We had some damage on here. What we're gonna show you though can work on any panel. It doesn't matter if it's a roof, door, deck lid, anything. It's gonna be the same steps. We're gonna show you how to cut. We're gonna show you how to make your patch. We're gonna show you how to keep your contours and body lines perfect. So when it welds in, it's an invisible patch on there. So I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way. Let's dive in. First, you wanna determine the area of repair. You can see here, I'm just using some painter's tape to lay out the area that we're gonna cut. Now I'm doing it much larger than what the damage is. Two reasons for that. One, there was a low spot to the right. The other is it's easier to work a larger panel than try and focus on something about a three inch diameter. What we're doing now is using my painter's tape to get that area. We're gonna then take the measurements from that and transfer it onto a clean sheet of 18 gauge steel, which will start working and forming as our patch panel. So a tip here, rather than just use a Sharpie and a steel roll to create the line for your patch panel, I have a wide blade half inch Sharpie, which I'm using in place of die chem. The reason for that, I just don't like the acetone that's in the die chem, but it's for the same purpose. We're now gonna transfer our measurement using the steel roll on a scribe onto that Sharpie line there, which will give us a crisp 1 64th line to do our cut on. First thing before we cut, I'm gonna drill the corner relief hole. This is a 1 8 hole, which will allow the cutoff wheel to come into both sides and have a clean patch panel. With this task here where we need these laser straight cuts, I'm going right to the pneumatic panel saw. This thing's designed just for this. You got a rigid base, we got our sight lines on it, and we got a diamond wheel. So we're gonna get perfect cuts each time. And here's the proof. We're putting our steel straight edge right against the cut we just completed, and it's perfect. As you can see here, I'm simply gonna mark and cut out the damage area. But you can see our patch is still the same size, much larger. This just makes it easier for us to form and contour the patch as we're doing the repair. So I already have my patch panel cut out to size. What I'm doing now is just removing my tape here and we're gonna cut out this damage area. Great feature of this tool is its plunge cut ability. You can see here the blade just dropping through this 18 gauge, cutting laser straight lines. I could have grabbed an angle grinder or something else to do this, but not when I want accurate cuts. For them, I'll go right to the pneumatic panel saw. A common detail I often see overlooked by people is not prepping the panel edges. This is something you must do, not only for perfect panel fitment, but also for a perfect weld. What we're using here is our pneumatic deburr tool. The diamond wheel will allow you to prep both sides of the panel very easily, quickly, and cleanly. Two products that are a must have for doing any of this work. And it's something that's not huge. You don't have to outfit your whole shop with this stuff. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars. First is the eight inch bead roller. This thing is a workhorse in a small little package. Mounts in a vise, comes with the most common beads you're gonna need. In fact, what we're using here, we're setting it up with our flanging dies. This thing will work any of your patch panels. You can do rockers, you can do something five foot long on here. As long as you have a 16 inch piece, you can get to the center of it with this throw. And it goes without saying, and I've done this a lot, I'm gonna practice on a scrap piece. What I'm doing here is setting up the spacing on my flange dies to make sure that my offset is exactly what matches the reveal on the door. Now that I'm happy with the setup that we have in the bead roller, let's move on to the real deal. So you might be asking yourself, why did I start with the bead roller? Why not the English wheel? In this particular patch in here, the door has such a gentle curvature, it was easier to just do the bead roller first, and then we'll go ahead and finish up with the English wheel. 
you may get into another area where a sail on a vehicle or some other piece where you have a uh, more of a contour on there, a reverse, then you may want to do your wheeling first and then go ahead and finish with your bead rolling. It's all going to depend on the patch panel. Swapping out to the mini English wheel now. You can see this is easy one man operation here. Throwing it into the bench vise, ready to go. This thing packs a powerful punch in a small little frame here. It's rigid, you got some nice hardened polished wheels, anvil on it. What we're doing now is forming. When you're using the English wheel, slow and steady wins the race. You're not going real fast like you see on TV shows. You want to keep your passes very tight and close together so you get a nice uniform gentle contour across the panel. When you're using the English wheel, check frequently. Do a little bit of forming, go ahead and check against your pattern or your piece like we're doing here. Be mindful though, you're putting your patch paddle over top of the material, so you have that material thickness in there. So don't be alarmed if your detail and your reveals don't line up exactly. They will once you cut out the base metal. So once the panel's formed and you're happy with the shape and the contour of it, it's time to cut out the parent metal. So we're laying our patch panel over top and again, I'm using the Sharpie as our layout fluid and I'm using the Scribe to give us a crisp line. To make these cuts, I'm grabbing my go-to, the pneumatic panel saw. Super accurate cuts, very easy. Since it is a door skin we're working on, the metal is going to be rolled over, spot welded underneath of it. Easy way to remove this is with an angle grinder and a flap disc. Slowly and steadily grind that area. And what you'll do is you'll see the two panels cut and separate. Now you can remove the old damaged metal. Then you can easily take care of what's remaining around the door edge. Prep everything for our new patch. Once again, you can see the deburring tool in action. This thing quickly and easily cuts off the burr on the top and bottom side. As you can see, we're getting the bottom side of the top panel. Now go ahead and try and fit a flap disc in there. With the deburring done, we're now going to prep the panel for welding. I'm using our pre-painting prep here to remove any contaminants around the weld area. I'm using the magnets here to hold the patch panel in place. Now this is the last chance you get to make sure everything's perfect before we start welding. Now that I'm happy with the fit up that we have, I'm going to go ahead and start laying out what we're going to do for the folded pieces here on the edge. We have a half inch reveal that we need to fold over. So I marked that with the steel rule, transfer that with my dividers to the other side of the patch panel, and then head over to the bead roller. Because this is the outside edge of the door corner, we have two pieces coming in that need to be formed and bent 180 degrees. We need to have a relief cut in there so the two pieces can be formed over the door edge. While I'm setting up the bead roller here, I want to tell you what we're doing. We have our existing door reveal or our flange that we made earlier. Now we need another one, 90 degrees to that, and they have to intersect or actually overlap. As you can see here on our test panel, if I simply drive across those two things, it's gonna deform the shape. To eliminate that, simply drill your relief holes at the end of your cut, take some snips, and just give two snips in there. Now you can see what happens when we drive over that intersecting flange, we keep our crisp lines. With the tipping die installed on the bead roller, I'm going to gradually form 90 degree edge on both sides. Now we're going to run through this a couple times here. With some pressure on the material through the bead roller, we'll slowly get our 90 degree. You don't want to form the bends all at once and risk distorting the panel at this point.
Now that the edges are formed, we're going to go ahead and do a final test fit. Again, we're using the magnets to retain the patch panel into the part here. This is your last chance before welding. Use your file, sandpaper, whatever you need to do any perfect fitment. So look at this close. As you can see here, we nailed it. It's that saw. It's the mini English wheel, the 8-inch bead roller. All of them worked in harmony here. Perfect fit on a patch panel. Time to send it home. Remember, when you're welding in your patch panel, doesn't matter if it's a door, quarter panel, roof, wherever it is, heat is the enemy. It will start warping and ruin everything you've done up to now. So skip around. You can see what I'm doing here is go to one side, a couple inches apart, do that, and then stop. Take your glove off. Run your hand across the panel. If it's too hot to touch, that's above 150. Stop, let it cool down for a couple minutes, then get back on it. All of your tacks will eventually form one continuous weld. Once you're done with the spot welding, let's go ahead and do some weld blending, see if there's any little pinholes where we need to fix and hit some. Tip here with the angle grinder and your flap disc, don't just start using an eraser-like motion around the weld. One continuous, start from one end of the bead to the other. One continuous. That'll keep it level. That'll keep your heat uniform. Do that. Stop every now and then. Again, your hand on the panel. If it's too hot to touch, it's above 150. Let it cool down a couple minutes. This will reveal any little areas that we missed. You can see here on the one side, there were a couple spots where we just need to do a little filler in there. Hit that, and again, come back and blend. Little tip here. We're taking a break from blending because the panel is warm. So since it's warm, let's just do some uh, edge forming. Using our hammer and dolly here, just slow and steady, form the edge, work it from one side to the edge, go back, do that. Again, don't use an eraser motion, don't be jumping around. Form it continuous, but form it slow. That'll give you a nice, crisp, sharp edge. Now that our weld blending is done, I'm prepping the panel for our OptiFlow primer. This is an industrial grade 2K epoxy. In a roll-on application, what makes it great for somebody at home, in a limited space, and without a booth. So here's the finished panel, and it looks awesome. After a weekend's worth of work, we got professional results just as we wanted. Two tools here that stood out on this job, pneumatic panel saw, deburring tool. Could not have cut the accurate lines on the patch panel or our door without them. So now the door is ready for bodywork and paint. We got a lot more videos on that on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe. For more information on the tools that you've seen here, click on eastwood.com.